Hello, welcome to the tax tutorials. Um, my name's Philip, I'm your host. Now today we're going to talk about uh, companies and how companies pay dividends to their shareholders. In a previous tutorial, you would have uh, seen how dividends are taxed in the hands of different shareholders when they receive the uh, uh, funds. Now we're going to show you how a company uh, when they make a profit, they then pay a portion of that profit as dividends to its shareholders. So first of all, the company needs to be making a profit. Uh, second of all, it needs to have paid tax out of its profit. So that's why the dividend is called after-tax dividends. So they're dividends that have been paid after the company has paid tax. Now you might say then, how come a shareholder is taxed on that amount? Well, this is where we come, this is where we have the uh, something called you know, the dividend imputation system, which was introduced in order to avoid the issue of double taxation. Uh, so a company has already paid income tax on its uh, taxable profit or what we call taxable income. Uh, that's the correct term. So the company has to have taxable income and out of that taxable income, uh, it's a uh, tax rate, uh, which is either 30% or 27.5%. If the company is a base rate entity, uh, that portion will be uh, the tax amount. And of that tax amount that the company pays, uh, uh, we have what we call a franking account uh, balance. So I'm going to do a little exercise. Now, I hope you can see this uh, screen. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, say company A, B, C, PTY, LTD. Now, let's say this company, year one, taxable income, let's say $100,000. Now of that $100,000, uh, the tax payable is, tw let's say it's uh, company tax rates 27.5%. So we multiply 100,000 times 27.5%, which is $27,500. So now we have retained earnings equals 100,000 minus the tax, $27,500. So what we're saying here is that after the end of year one, the company has $72,500 as fully frank dividends that it can pay out to its shareholders. Now, this 27.5% tax is going to be paid at some point during year two. However, the 27,500 is transferred to what we call a franking account for the company. So, uh, franking account uh, and, sorry, we can say beginning year two. So I just pushed year one by mistake, beginning year two. Uh, now this franking account represents the amount of tax that the company has paid. Now I'll take you back and explain what a frank, what consists of a franking account. Uh, a franking account uh, is deals with uh, tax. So we have again in, a, in the account, uh, a debit and a credit. I'll explain that to you shortly. Uh, but a franking account determines how much frank dividends a company can pay. Now, there's no law that says uh, that the company has to pay a fully frank dividend all the time. It can pay an unfrank dividend, basically. Uh, if the company has been making profits while in the past years it's been uh, making tax losses, uh, that's fine because accounting profits can be different than tax losses and uh, accounting items can be different than tax items. So you, you, you can have an instance where a company has accounting profits 
and has retained earnings as per its accounting uh, records, but it has tax losses. So its dividends that it can pay to shareholders uh, is only unfranked dividends. Whereas a frank dividend is only uh, relating to the tax amounts that a company pays and relates to what it has in its franking account balance. Now, a company does not have to pay 100% franking credits on its uh, frank dividends. It can pay a franked portion of, let's say, 80% or a franked portion of 50%. So that's why some of the ASX listed companies, uh, you'll see that the company has a frank dividend attached to it of uh, an amount per share. But then the uh, franking credit is 50% franked or it's 80% franked. It means that the franking credit attached to it uh, is only 80% of the total franking credit that it would have originally paid. Okay, now let's go to year two. Uh, in year two, their company has paid tax installments. So let's say quarter one tax installment, uh, $5,000. Or let's say quarter two tax installment, because let's say the company uh, lodged its tax return in September. Uh, and therefore it was issued with quarterly tax and notice, uh, you know, from the second quarter onwards. So quarter two, quarter three, tax installment, another $5,000. Now at this stage, uh, the, the company hasn't uh, paid the tax yet. So it pays the tax during year two. So let's say, uh, the frank year one tax paid is this amount there, $27,500. So at the top there, we're going to say franking account balance so that you have a running balance of the franking account. Now, quarter four, April to June, we don't take that into account because for the simple fact that the April to June quarter tax installment gets paid in the following financial year. So we're only concerned about amounts that get paid uh, in this current period. Now, at this stage, a franking account balance has a debit and a credit. So we're going to uh, move these columns there and we're going to say, credit amount and debit column. Now we're going to put 5,000, 5,000, and we're going to put a balance. So we're going to put 5,000, the balance, then the next lot of 5,000 installments. So that means the, the, so you can see the running balance here. Now the year one tax paid, uh, 27,500, we, do 10,000 and add that to the 27,500, which means now you have a franking balance of 37,500. And then let's say uh, the company, uh, now in a credit uh, account balance, uh, that includes any tax installments the company paid, and any income tax that the company has paid in relation to the uh, uh, previous uh, tax return. Now, uh, in the debit column, the most common, uh, oh, and also in the credit column, you have the franking credit of uh, any of the, any dividends that a company receives. So let's say uh, dividend received fifty thousand dollars, but franking credit, uh, let's say at the 30% corporate tax rate. So $50,000 times 0.3 divided by 0.7. So in this case, the company receives a dividend of $50,000. Only the franking credit attached to the dividend gets added into the uh, franking uh, account as a credit. So now we add the running balance, which means ideally the franking account balance remaining is $58,928. Now let's say uh, it paid, 
uh, franked dividend payment, $72,500 and franking credit based on 27.5% as a company tax rate. So this goes in the debit column. So already there, we can calculate 72,500 times 0.275 divided by 0.725. So the franking, uh, okay, so when a company pays a dividend, uh, it means that the dividend payment is in the debit uh, column. And then the other item that goes in the debit column of the franking account is any tax refunds uh, or any interest, uh, uh, any interest um, uh, delayed as a result of the tax refund. So company tax refunds and frank dividend payments to shareholders, uh, that goes in the debit column of the franking account balance. Now there's a lot of other items that go into the debit and credit uh, sides of the franking account balances, but these are the more common ones that we're going to do for the purpose of this exercise. So again, the balance 58928 minus 27,500. You now have a franking account balance at the end of year two, $31,428.57. Now let's say in year two, the company had a taxable profit or income again of $80,000 tax payable at 27.5%, 80 times 27 and a half, which is $22,000. Now it paid a dividend. Okay, so let's say dividend payment from year one of 72,500. Retained profits, year one, uh, which is 72,500. So now you have retained profits year two, you've got $80,000 minus $22,000, which is a tax minus the dividend payment year one, but you need to add the retained earnings at the end of year one. So you're still left with $58,000 as your retained earnings at the end of year two. And of that $58,000, uh, the uh, company can then make a uh, franked dividend payment. So let's Let's work out the uh, franking credit. Franking credit based on $58,000 times 0.275 divided by 0.725. You have a franked uh, you can, your company can pay a frank dividend at the end of year two of $58,000 which means a franking credit attached to the $58,000 is $22,000. And quite ironically, well, not ironically, it should be, uh, given that the mathematics is right, this $22,000 uh, equals to the tax amount uh, at, at the end of year two based on the company's taxable income or profit of $80,000. So now you have year, Beginning balance of the franking account. Beginning balance of franking account, 31,428. Then you need to add quarter four tax installment. That's a credit side, let's say $5,000. And then you do the running balance calculation then quarter one tax installment let's say that's gone down now to uh, let, let's say it's the same five thousand dollars quarter two let's just copy and paste these to save time 
$5,000 and $5,000. So uh, can you see what I'm doing with the uh, adding on these uh, running balance uh, account amounts there? Uh, you have now a uh, franking credit balance of $51,428. Now you need to state that year two tax paid was $22,000 from there. So the tax payment goes in the credit uh, side of the franking account. So now you have a running balance of a uh, franking account of $73,428. Now, you can say franked dividend payment. Uh, let's say we make a dividend payment of $58,000 and franking credit 27.5%. So, we do 58,000 times 0.275 divided by 0.725. So your franking credit, 0.725, your franking uh, credit redu balance reduces by $22,000, which means you now have a franking account balance at the end of year two of $51,428. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to use all of that because you've used your retained profits to pay out the frank dividend uh, uh, after all of the profits have been accounted for. Now, this is just a simple exercise. Let's say there have been retained profits in the previous years. Uh, this is just uh, something simple. Uh, you can then have a dividend available, available dividend to pay. So this is the franking credit component, 51,428 divided by 75 times 0.725. You can have a franking, uh, you can pay a franked dividend of up to $135,584 based on these uh, simple calculations. And part of the reason as to why you can make uh, those larger payments is because you've paid tax installments. So if you calculate your tax installments uh, uh, from the start, so you get two tax installments and then uh, all of the other tax installments, uh, you've got $30,000 in tax installments that you've paid that still haven't been used up. And you've also got the dividend received with the $21,000 attached uh, franking credit to that. That's how you come up with the uh, franking account balance of $51,428. And that's why uh, it seems that the available dividend to pay is $135,584, even though there's no more retained profits to utilize based on these very simple calculations. So I trust that these, uh, uh, this simple exercise uh, was helpful and uh, simple to follow. Uh, again, please note, this is not a substitute for financial advice of any type or nature. Uh, if you do want more specific advice, please see your professional accountant or tax agent for uh, more specific advice uh, tailored to your own personal circumstances.